Now in this question then, we're asked to solve it for x. We've got log of 11 minus 6x in base 2 is equal to 2 log of x minus 1 in base 2 plus 3. Now, how do we solve something like this? Well, it's a log equation and it consists of one term here, another term here, and one term here. Three terms in all. Two of the terms are log terms. Now, whenever you solve any log equation, make sure you bring it down to two terms. And in this case, you've got to gather the logs together on one side of the equal sign and non-log terms on the other side. Well, we've got a log term here, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, subtract this term here, 2 log of x minus 1 in base 2 from both sides. So we do that, and if we do that, what we therefore get is the log in base 2 of 11 minus 6x minus the 2 log in base 2 of x minus 1 is going to equal the 3. We've still got three terms, okay? We need to create two terms, so we need to be able to group these two log terms together. Now, in grouping log terms together, we need to apply some of the basic log rules. And whenever I see a minus, I always remember this particular rule. I'll just remind you what it is. That is that the log of a particular value, let's just say A, in a particular base, let's say base C, minus the log of another number, B, in the same base C, is identical to the log in base C of A divided by B. So when I look at that, I, I notice that it appears to be this rule. But you've got to be very careful here because we've got this 2 in front of the log. And this rule only says log take log, not with a number in the front of any log. So to get around this problem, we use what is often called the power rule for logs. And again, you should know this rule. That if you've got a number in front of a log, let's say the log of A in base C, then this is identical to the log of A in base C and what you do is you bring the number at the front up as a power so it's the log of A to the power N in base C. So we need to apply this rule first of all. So what we have then is the log in base 2 of 11 minus 6x. Get rid of this 2 by bringing it up as a power so we've got the log in base 2 of x minus 1 all squared equals 3. Now we've got log of something, take away log of something else, which is what we have here, and we can use this rule. So if we use that rule, this becomes the log in base 2 of 11 minus 6x, all divided by x minus 1 squared. And that's equal to 3. So what I've done now is I've reduced the log equation then down to an equation with two terms in. One term here, a log term, equals a number. Two terms. Always do that. Now that we've got it to this stage, we've got this concept here. The log of a number equaling something else reduces down to a to the power b, as you can see, equals that number. So n is the 11 minus 6x over x minus 1 all squared. The b is the 3 and the a is the 2. So applying this particular rule, so therefore what we have is 11 minus 6x all divided by x minus 1 squared equals the base 2 to the power 3. Okay. Now, 2 cubed is 8, and what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x minus 1 all squared. So therefore, we end up with 11 minus 6x equals 8 times x minus 1 all squared. Next, all I need to do is to multiply out this bracket. x minus 1 times another x minus 1, take care here, 
gives x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now I'm going to expand the bracket. We have 11 minus 6x equals 8x squared minus 16x plus 8. And I've got a quadratic equation looming up. We've got the x squared term here. So I'm going to want to start with the 8x squared. I'm going to add 6x to both sides. So if I add it to the minus 16x, we've got minus 10x. And then I'm going to subtract the 11 from the 8, and that gives me minus 3. And that will equal 0. Now I can factorize this quadratic equation, a couple of brackets, and what it reduces down to is 4x and a 2x to give me the 8x squared. And then two numbers for the minus 3 that multiply together to give minus 3. It will be a plus 1 and a minus 3. And if you check this out, you've got minus 12x here and plus 2x. That gives me the minus 10x. So in the usual way, that means that therefore the factor 4x plus 1 would equal 0 or the other factor 2x minus 3 will equal 0. And if we carry on just down here, when the 4x plus 1 equals 0, if I rearrange this by taking 1 from both sides and dividing by 4, you end up with therefore x equals minus a quarter. Or in this equation, if we add 3 to both sides and divide them by 2, we end up with x equaling 3 over 2. Two solutions then it seems. But this is the point where you've got to be very, very careful. Because you cannot take the log of a negative number. Now, if x was minus a quarter, this term here would be positive. 11 minus 6 times negative a quarter would be a positive value. That's OK. But over here, if x was minus a quarter, we'd be ending up with the log of minus 1 and a quarter. If you tried to do that on your calculator, you'd get an error. You cannot log a negative number. So therefore, x cannot be minus a quarter, but it can be 3 over 2, 1 and a half, because if you substitute it into here and here, you'll be logging a positive number. OK, so that's a place where it's very easy to trip up. So I'm just going to basically say then that since x minus 1, that's this bit here, OK, must be greater than 0, therefore x must equal 3 over 2, or 1.5 or 1.5, OK? Right, well, that brings us to the end of this quite long solution. And it also brings us to the end of this question.